Howdy folks, Kirk here with Kirk Giordano Plastering. Today what we're going to do is we're going to tie this door in we're on top of the world here. We're in Oakland. We're up on Grizzly Peak. They get 100 mile an hour winds here. Um, with the wind, it's like hurricane weather. I've done about 10 houses up, up here over the last 30 years and a lot of times the wind is just phenomenally fierce. So you can't mess around when you tie things in. Anyhow, a uh, fella emailed me, uh, Nick Silva, he's with Saturn Construction. Uh, they're actually from San Francisco to do this door. We're going to take the stucco here and he's got a channel here. Then they're going to pull the plywood out and set the door directly in the channel in here. So this is just going to stay stucco. You really got to know what you're doing to do that. I'll give you Nick's number in case you have something in San Francisco. It's 415 area code. 6520956. Great, great contractor. Young guy, about 30. Um, we are going to first, there's a big gap right here, and we're going to break this out. They broke it out, and I looked at it, and I said, well, I can see that it leaked before us because I can see all the, the nail holes that are rusting, and I can see he broke it out with a hammer because there's no paper left. So I asked him, what'd you break it out with? He said, a hammer. I already kind of knew that. What we're going to do is we're going to use some tools. And the tools allow us to salvage the paper. The house is only uh, 12, 15 years old. So a 15-year-old house, we should have pretty good paper, even though it did leak. Um, so we're going to get started. We're going to first break everything out. And with this, I'm not messing around. I'm not using paper. I'm using uh, this uh, bethane membrane, the grace, to come around. It's The most important part on here is breaking down far enough to get to this flashing and countering this flashing here. And again, there's another deck below. That's why I got this uh, uh, cardboard stuff here. I don't want to go below the deck and have to clean up. Last thing I'll show you is up here. The stuff is about an inch and a half thick. That's pretty thick stuff. And it's uh, Santa Barbara Smooth Mission finish that's been floated. We've got to use our tools to break this out properly. And this is the most important part on the job. If we can't tuck our new paper or our new Vicor, Grace, underneath this existing one, it's going to leak. So our paper is going to go under the existing here and down to this metal. And when I get down to the metal, I'm going to do it just like this. We're going to take it here. I'm not going to round this edge off. We're going to go tight in here. That way, no water can get in here. Once we got all that, we're going to put it back together with the cement work. We'll show you when we get to that point. Tell you folks a tip too. Now what I'm doing with this Bosch is as I'm breaking it out I'm going a little bit at a time like an eighth inch at a time and I'm working my way back. If you just try to go an inch or two back it's just going to leave huge clunkers like if you're using a hammer. Now what I've tried to do I'm doing a little bit of exploration too. I'm seeing how good this paper is. If the paper's in great condition then I, I can do my job a little easier. If it's deteriorated I can't do my job. I'm looking at this that Kelly Moore or a lost American paint on it, which is good. Um, that just means they had some issues and they said, hey, let's paint the thing and maybe that'll waterproof it. Once we get it where I've got some pretty good paper, I've got two inches here. I'm going to take my hammer and pull back. Like, like so. You've got to pull it back. Take this, pull it back. Now you see, I've got, I've got some pretty good paper here. I've got at least two inches. Then we're gonna, once I get all the way around here, this two inches of paper, then I'm going to brush it off with a brush because then I'm going to use the uh, bicor to go over this as tight as I can then come over here so it's an unpenetratable seal, not just paper. The bicor will do it. As Dan, Dan's also going to uh, help me. Of course, Jay's on the camera here. Once we pull this all the way back here, we'll show it to you as as we get going with the uh, membrane, because the membrane on this, it's much better to use a, a peeling stick than just paper. Okay guys, we're done with a nasty job of breakout. Uh, something like this, you can go for an hour with two guys. Sometimes you can take 10 hours to do it. It all depends on the hardness of the stucco. Uh, what I'm doing now is, here's the critical areas. The, the metal they have here and the pan metal they have here. Our, I just left this on to prove a point so I can show you folks. 
our new membrane is going to go underneath this one and on top of that. That's about the most critical, the very bottoms. Just like what we did here, our, our membrane is over there flashing. That is proper. And the, the other critical thing is the tops. Now, we removed all of this. Uh, you see how this paper flaps up? Okay, we're going to put the membrane here and we're going to bend this corner. So all the way here, and then we're going to go underneath this membrane, all the way around. Once we're all the way around, we're going to go ahead and wire it up. That's the easy part in the stucco. Okay, guys, last thing on the lot is, now these corners, these corners got to go on so that they're true and plumb. They've got to be true this way, meaning these are my guides for when I put my stucco on. And actually, on the inside here, we have metal, which is one inch thick. They want the stucco to come out seven eighths, so it's got to come out this way, seven eighths, and this way. This is stucco actually here is uh, about an inch and a quarter. Sometimes we get the fluctuations. Technically it's seven eighths, but sometimes it's a little bit more. Anyhow, I'm using my gun. I'm, I'm looking at this side, bringing it out there, looking at this side, bringing it out there. And we are going to get almost done here. We're going to start the uh, cement work. Anyhow, true and plumb. True and plumb, it always helps to use one solid piece here. Don't go putting uh, two or three pieces and it just takes too long to use two or three pieces. We caulk all our seams. We caulk there, we caulk here. And we're ready to go for cement real soon. Alright guys, now we're doing the first coat of stucco. And the product I'm using has got accelerators in it because I'm actually going to do both coats today. Dan is uh, hawking a tunnel. Dan asked me a second ago, well, let me show the plaster. Said, what am I going to do? I don't know how to work the camera, so i got to do this. Anyhow, we are a family of stucco guys. So this is just the first coat here, and it's got a lot of center in it. Within 20 minutes, I'm going to stick on that next coat. You get the idea. Now, if Dan wasn't doing this, I'd just be scooping it out of the bucket myself. Just like that, that's the first coat. Okay. We're killing time now. We gotta uh, let that cement uh, harden for about 15 minutes. What you guys don't usually see, because I don't point it out, is all the different cements we got. We got lots of different buckets of accelerators, Portland cements, and I won't go into it because there's just so many. What I will show you is we've got a gorgeous view here. Now this view, <laughs> you say it's a view to die for. Look at that. We're up on Grizzly Peak, up, uh, you see the world up here. What does that mean for contractors? A nightmare to waterproof houses because when we get a wind-driven storm with 100 mile an hour winds, it just shoves that rain horizontal into roof, eaves, windows. So you better know what you're doing when you're waterproofing up here. Of course, uh, I've done about 10 homes up here in the last 30 years, maybe more. A whole bunch on Skyline, a whole bunch up on Grizzly Peak. You name it, Tiburon up in the upper hills. We do it where the high winds are. Okay guys, finishing up the second coat now. And again, these inside pieces, we're just leaving an eighth of an inch. Eighth of an inch. Where I need a little bit of terra. I'm just build it out an eighth of an inch. Eighth of an inch. This actually takes a lot of practice. I'm, I'm more or less doing this to show you how we do it. I wouldn't uh, expect anybody without about eight years experience to try to do this particular stuff here because these corners got a line here to here. They're off by quarter inch instead of seven eighths. They're almost inch and a half. You, everything has got to be true, plumb and level. So it's a lot of eye work also. So here's my second coat. And now everything is true and plumb. What I'm doing is I'm allowing this stuff to set because I have so many accelerators in it. I figure about 20 minutes. And this is gonna set. Now I'm a hard rubber float it, then I'm a sponge float it. Alright guys. Final. We're taking color coat. This color coat right here is the same color coat they used here originally. And it's a Santa Barbara. Santa Barbara has very little aggregate. And if you float it, which they did, it's a little bit of aggregate in it. It leaves a really, really super fine float finish. Anyhow, that's the spreading of it. And then we take a sponge float, 
water bucket, that's all that is, just water. Tap out the majority of water because you leave a lot of water on here. I flick it this way, hit it, turn it back around. Hit it inside. You don't want to slam here because then you'll bend your float the wrong way. We want to keep this kind of curved. Okay, now that that's done, we hit our joint first. Just like that. Feather into the joint. Feather into the joint. Feather into this particular finish here. We take new to the existing. Just like that. And then we come up. We come up. Okay, guys. We are done. This is what we call a color coat over it. And we're just matching the texture. So I've spread it out and I take close attention to the detail of feathering in. And feathering in is the, uh, well, what separates the professionals from the homeowners or apprentices. You feather in, hey, this side's in the sun, you'll see it better. You take the existing and you, or you take the new and you bring it into the existing, just like that. And this particular finish doesn't have a whole lot of float lines. Uh, you don't see float lines. It almost looks like a dash, except it's very uniform. So we let it set, we go over it a couple times. Anyhow, that's how you do uh, a door like that. My name's Kirk. I'm with Kirk Giordano Plastering. Thank you folks for watching, and as usual, see you guys on the next one.